are with the, the wisdom factory. I'm Heidi in Italy, and you see behind me the Tiber or Tiber, the river which goes from here to Rome and then into the sea. And today I have a guest who is right from the other side of the world, Jorge Daly, and he is originally from Peru, but now he is in USA in Washington, I think you said, you know, and we want to talk about a book he is writing and I was, he has finished as far as I know, uh, and I was interested in it because it talks about a friend, about a German friend, and as I'm German, you know, I wanted to know what this special friendship is, and before we go into this topic, I give over to you, Jorge, and you can introduce yourself, you can say whatever you want, and then we go into the idea of the book and into the story okay well, thank you very much Heidi for this invitation I am actually very happy to share this space with you I'm very grateful very grateful very thankful for allowing me to share this space with you and talk about a uh, share with you and with your audience this um, how can I say this project this experience of meeting um, a most remarkable man, I would say, and which, uh, uh, and as a result of my meeting him and, and befriending him, what evolved was a, 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 a book that I just finished and, uh, and that um, was aimed basically at celebrating, at celebrating his life, at celebrating his life. So, um, yes, he, he was born outside Berlin in 1904, and he lived, he, he lived the, the 20th century. And that's part of my, of my interest of, on, on him, because he, he lived this, in a way, this amazing and terrifying century. So he was a walking history of, of the 19th century since very early in his life. And um, I feel very, very much fortunate that I got to, to meet him. And I feel very much fortunate that he opened his life to him, not just his mind, his amazing intellect, but his heart as well. So that is the book that I yeah that I wanted. can you tell me a little bit about you 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 were in Peru but what is your background I mean and how why do you go to did you go to to America and what are you doing a part of writing books about amazing people <laughs> well, my, my life it's it's itself a a, a, a journey also of I would say of self-discovery, of finding my purpose of a higher calling. And uh, because I, I come, a, I hail from a, from a Peruvian family. My father was a, a businessman and he always wanted, he wanted me to groom me into being a businessman and a banker actually. And, uh, it was difficult to, to separate myself from him because he had a very strong personality, but he was a very good man, a very good loving man. Sometimes it's easier to, to, to establish your identity when your father is not, not such a good person, let me, let me put it this way. So it took some time. So I had to leave Peru. I left Peru. I came to the United States. I studied in political economy political economy, which is not economics per se, but it is economics and politics. Uh, it is something more grounded in, in, in philosophy, in history. And that's what drove me eventually to meet this remarkable man in, 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 when he was already 80, 83 years old. Mm -hmm. And you met him in, in the US or in Germany? Well, I attended, I attended a meeting in Vienna and uh, it's about, it was about um, economics. I remember the, uh, 
even the chancellor of, Vienna, of Austria was there, Franz Vanisky, and uh, many important, prominent bankers. And the topic was what to do about the crisis of the Latin American debt. So I had, uh, um, I made a very brief, um, uh, I presented my views and a lady he walked up to me and said, look, your views are very interesting. And it is my strong recommendation that you meet this man. You have to meet this man because his views are very similar to yours. And he gave me his address in New York and that, that's what I, when I returned, that's what I contacted him. Yeah, wonderful. So now tell me about this man. What was the fascinating thing about him? The fascinating thing, yes. Thank you, Heidi. Um, first of all, um, he was already 83. He was already 83. And immediately I sensed an amazing vitality. A, an amazing vitality physically and intellectually as well. And this thirst, this drive for, for further, to be very intellectually uh, active. And um, even he said to me that one of the secrets of his vitality was to keep the intellect very, very, very active and to engage in what he called bold thinking, bold thinking. So we connected intellectually. We connected intellectually and um, we had basically the same views uh, about uh, politics, about economics, about history. Um, we spent a lot of time discussing what could be done in order to improve the, uh, uh, the world economy, but most important because what stayed in his hand, what, how to improve the condition of the downtrodden, of the people that are left behind, of the marginalized. So in that sense, he, he, he was using a very a, a, a Marxian economics and Marxian, Marxian philosophy a background that he studied when he was young in, 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 in Berlin. So that connected us. But I realized shortly afterward that this man was far more than his ideas, <laughs> far more than this amazing intellect. This man had a very interesting life a very, very interesting life, uh, full of very interest, interesting episodes and full of mystery as well, if I may say, Heidi. Um, a man who, for example, um, and I will just define it with, with two words, of very, 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 uh, 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 high integrity, integrity, very principled to his idea, very principled, very passionate with his work, the work of ideas, the work of ideas, highly principled. He, he would not tolerate, he would not tolerate uh, actions, activities that would defy his, his, his principles. So uh, that was very appealing to me because he was already in his early 80s, mid 80s. And just to, give you, just to give you an example, he was one of the first people who broke off, notwithstanding his Marx background, he broke off with Stalinism, with dictatorships, with the, 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 dictatorship, the dictatorship of Stalinism. So he broke off early on in his life because he went to Moscow in 1932 and he spent time there and he saw it that that was not something that would be conducive for freedom of, of humankind. He was one of the first, it's amazing. Being very young, being very, very young. So uh, he had to leave Germany in 1933, but when the Soviet uh, regime was installed in the former GDR, 
he made himself this process of not visiting, of not going to the former GDR because Stalinism was, was there. Notwithstanding the fact that he was born in a small place, a little bit east of Berlin, a small town that was in the former GDR. And it was right after 1989 when he decided to visit uh, 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 his birthplace. So I think I want to convey the sense of how principled he was, how a man of high integrity with, mm -hmm. with, with this example. Yeah, thank you. And I, I wonder when he has lived the whole century, uh, do you know anything about how he lived the, the wars? I mean, you said he left then in 33 because obviously he was not quite a uh, concurrent with the uh, Hitler regime. But how was it in the, he was very young in the First World War, but uh, how did he live that? Well, that is a, well, one of the, one of the most remarkable episodes of his life from what he told me was that um, he left home when he was 15. And it, when he left 15, we're talking about 1919, um, the German Communist Party had already been founded by Rosa Luxemburg. And in 1919, he was very young, 14, 19. And um, his mother, um, his mother gave him an ultimatum, if I would say, you either, <laughs> you, you, you do not come home with us uh, red uh, propaganda. You have to choose either <laughs> if you, you, if you want to come, you are not allowed to come with that red propaganda. Okay, so either you leave it out or you leave home. And I'm going to quote him. So he said to me, Jorge, I chose to leave. I chose to leave. And, um, and he was very strong with what I'm saying. Even he said to me, I would prefer death before giving up a, my, 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 my principles. So and he from, was very so he was very convinced of the communist uh, approach then he was very much convinced very very much convinced uh, and um, but from that moment on there was like a series of event, episodes on his life that led him to study to study and then he became editor of the of the magazine of the communist party called red flag being very 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 young being very very young so he was very much an activist very very much an activist in the 1920s first study then as an editor um very much engaged with the activities of the party until until he 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 broke off as I was saying uh, he, 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 yes he was saying to you then in 1933 he had to flee Germany because not only was was he a communist or former communist um, he was also Jewish okay. So much against his will, he had to leave uh, 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 Germany. And uh, he went, uh, uh, that was in July or August 1933, and uh, he ended up in London until uh, 1939. And from London, he, uh, he went to New York. But his ideas evolved at the same time. One of his, he, he saw a parallel between fascism, Nazism, and, uh, and Stalinist communism. He saw a parallel, you know, a, a systems that in his view would um, uh, suppress human freedom. 
I'm wondering what you would say now when we are going back almost into similar situations. I would wonder what he would say. Do you he, have an idea? I, yes, because he would. <laughs> yes, yes, Ivy, of course. Um, when I first met him, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, talking about a capitalism, but it was communism. We talk about being libertarian, also anarchist, many things. But something remark, I detected something remarkable. Having this prodigious bright intellect, he, he opened up to the mysteries of life. And that, that, that by itself was very, very, very appealing, very, very attractive. For example, I'm going to quote him. Jorge, um, friendship. I will never understand friendship. There is something in life that brings together people, you know, or let's say people of goodwill, friends. And coming this from a remarkable, from, from a person who had the most remarkable intellect, who wanted to understand everything, for me, it is, it is, it is in itself remarkable. So he was open to, to mystery and he was, and he proceeded to tell me episodes in his life that cannot be explained but by anything but by mystery. For example, a trip that he made to Europe almost on the eve of the war of 1939 and leaving his documents in the train station <laughs> and uh, forgetting about his documents and miraculously finding the documents again things like that so or when he was very young i told you he left his house when he was 15 eh, running into 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 a gentleman into a man who who gave him some money so he could eat and invited him to a restaurant it, 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 things things like that so and I am very thankful for that because not only I am in debt to this very intellect, great intellect, but also to, because he opened up to that. And answering directly to your question, my dear Heidi, he would probably, he would be saying, Jorge, I do not know. All I know is that capitalism has not the, does not have the answers. And he would tell me this in the 1990s. And that's, those are the views that I hold right now, given the, the crisis that we are living in the world right now, this backlash to globalization, of, from globalization, this issue of climate change, COVID-19. So if he were with us, to, with us today, he would be um, observing, analyzing, and being very open to explore to explore the unknown. Would he uh, be alert? Because as I see it in Germany at least, but maybe in all the world, there's a strong tendency to go back to fascism. Would he be alert? Would he be shocked like I am? <laughs> um, it is uh, hard to say. Uh, I would say yes, because he had a he has a very much open mind, a very, a very much, and he was very analytical. You know, in the 1990s, when we, we had that conversation, those were the, the heyday, the heyday of the, of the end of history, of, of, of the victory of democracy, of capitalism over the former <laughs> communism. But yet he was open to see, I don't know what is going to happen. I don't think the system has the answers. That I remember him telling me very well, and it is documented in the book. In the book. And so he was very wise because the big changes happened then from then, which lead to the situation of today, because the, the Cold War was finished and so 
let's say in this words, America did, didn't know who to fight against. <laughs> Exactly, exactly, exactly. I remember having conversations with him basically about what was going on. He died in 2005. And even to the last day, he still was very, very, very lucid. You know, he, he turned 100. One of the gifts that I have, that I received from him, is that the family asked me to to give the eulogy in the in the in the service. It was it, it was a very important moment moment for me. But definitely, 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 uh, 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 Heidi, he would, I would say so. Yes, he would be a surprise, if not, uh, or as bewildered. Perhaps that's not the right word or as worried, worried, worried for the, con the human condition, very much worried. You mentioned a key word, Heidi, which is wisdom. He had a special kind of wisdom, perhaps not the ish, not the wisdom that arises from a contemplative, a life, but somewhat a wisdom that is still there in, in the intellect, because as I told you, he was one of the first to realize that Soviet communism was, was bound to fail. And that system was had basically, people were beholden to that system, great philosophers, intellects in, in, during those times. So he had that sort of special wisdom, Heidi. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You know what? We have never said who he is, what name he has. So you might tell us that, who we are talking about. Uh, yes, of course. It, it's, in the novel, he has um, a fictitious name. Okay. In the novel, he has a fictitious name. His name is, in the novel, is Oscar. Rathke. But in the real life, his name was uh, Gunther Reimann. Gunther Reimann. And everybody who listens to this can go into Google, can Google him, and um, see what is the man that I'm talking about and the man that really. Um, impressed me very, very much. Now, the book is a fictionalized account of his life. If I may share an episode, if just to give, just to portray the, the, the quality of the man. Um, in 1990, 1990, I was visiting in his home in New York, and uh, <laughs> he said to me, uh, I saw a picture in the living room in which he is with a, uh, with a young, he's young, and he is next to a beautiful, beautiful um, um, Oriental uh, Chinese lady. And I asked him, who is that lady? And he, he said to me, Jorge, that's a, very, that's a painful episode in my life, so I prefer not to talk about it. Okay, that's fine. So this is 1990. So in 1993, he said to me, Jorge, I remember that you're asking me about this picture. Now I am ready to talk to you about this lady. What happened, dear Heidi, is that because of the fall of the Berlin Wall and the opening up of the GDR, he had traveled to the former GDR and he had traveled to, to several cities, Leipzig being one of them. And he learned that this lady still existed. Somebody who, who had, he had not seen her since 1939, Heidi. And because of this trip that he makes to the GDR and he learns that she's still alive. 
and he goes to China to reconnect with her. So it's an amazing story. It's a fascinating story, Heidi. He had stopped seeing her in 1939 because of the war, because of, because of the things that happen in life. He was totally disconnected. He learns that she's still alive in 1992, 1991, and he decides to go and visit her oh, after <laughs> 40, 54 years. So how can you not write about a, about a life like this dear friend of mine has? So he definitely has a rich life experience. I mean, in 100 years, oh, many things can come together. And especially last century, there was everything, you know, there was the 20s who were sort of a, a, a new beginning and then uh, coming down again. And then after the war, a new beginning. And then, you know, the fall of the uh, Soviet Union and then the illusion to be, uh, now on the right track. <laughs> so. and exactly, Heidi. And he had, since very early in his life, he had a quest, he had a mission. And he fulfilled it to the best of his ability. At the same time, my book, and I am picking up these moments in which he would, would open up to the mysteries of life, to the mystery how real change happened in life, in society. Then I tried to go beyond that, beyond just the, uh, re recounting the episode of, of, of his life, but beyond in terms of an exploration of the human spirit, my dear Heidi. The exploration into the, e e so, so I celebrate his life and I open to the reader eventually, you know, like, or the window to, to see what's, what lies behind that, what lies behind the, the, the mystery of the change, the mystery of the change. For example, the, uh, uh, the change as embodied, for example, of a Martin, Martin Luther King, that for me, <laughs> It's a more solid, lasting change, as incomplete as it is, than the change imposed by a Mao or by Stalin or by a, or... You, uh, you were gone for a while. Can oh. you uh, say the last few sentences again? It was frozen. Yes, the, 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 the book, the book celebrates his life, but also it opens the window to see, to explore the mystery of the evolution of, of the spirit. It tries to capture the spirit that animates, that animates, animates change, transformation. And what I was trying to say, Heidi, is that that spirit is stronger in a more in, in my view in a Martin Luther King for example just or a Gandhi or a Nelson Mandela than the change animated by a Stalin or that is animated in the life of a Stalin or a Mao or or a Joe Biden or, or an Angela Merkel whoever so that is that is what I try to convey also in the in the in, in, in the book. That's fine. I, what I'm wondering, what did you learn about? I mean, you have dedicated a lot of time to, to write a book about a man. So you must have learned something for yourself. Uh, or it was so interesting. What was it so interesting for you that you were inclined to spend so much time and energy to talk about this man? I, I love him deeply. I'm, I'm, it's been like a labor of love, but it's also, it's also been, it's been a journey, a journey, my own personal journey because I met this man connecting 
connecting just with the intellect. And he was very, very generous, very, very generous. And we would spend hours and hours and hours talking about, about the 20th century, about the economics and the politics. But at the same time, at the same time, he opened up to the mysteries. And so he opened up a window, which for him, it was unresolved. Totally, totally unresolved. He stayed bewildered, let's say. So I decided to say something like this. Okay, Ginter, okay, or Oscar in the movie. Thank you. Now, let me, let me keep digging, diving. Even if you are not present, personally present now, your spirit still with me, but a spirit that it doesn't stay just here. That leads me, that led me to, to further exploration. And I am pretty sure, pretty sure that, that he would have understood me. It is, but not understood me here. He, he would have perhaps a better word, he would have tolerated. Yes, Jorge, yes, yes, yes. I can see that, Jorge, I can see that. <laughs> because there were moments of silence. And again, the silence, it could be the silence for me when it is relevant, it is when, when the mind is somewhat quiet. It opens up to, to the unknown. So what you write in your book and what the reader will read is a sort of inspiration, what a person can uh, achieve in a lifetime. And with all these changes, which might seem a little strange, you know, but that you go away from, from home so early. And you might even say that, um, you know, under uh, certain opinions this is a life which is not stable because he's doing this he's doing that he's doing that and he needs to do that and needs to do that but you seem to have understood that exactly this journey of life has created a mature human being not only that he has learned to see reality and the life around him very clearly and then could also had the humility to admit if something wasn't as he thought it was. And so he could abandon his ideology, let's say, of Stalinism, which before he thought it was great, and then he understood it was not. And this is really a, a path, uh, I mean, a step in the personal um, development. No? And then he did so many other things, and then he, he inspired you. And now you are... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, excited about bringing this forth. And I know you a little bit, you know, your emanation is of wonder of, of, you know, this, and I really appreciate this. And you want, I imagine that's the question, you want to tr um, bring this to people that they can be inspired and yeah, in wonder too, is it so? Yes. Thank you, Heidi. I, and that's precisely and precisely. And it, it is not a quest in my case, like, uh, let's say, like to replicate his life, my dear friend's life. No, 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 no. It is a quest to, to rest, to rest, to rest in, in, in wonder, in wonder of, of, of of, of our souls, of the depth of our soul, and rest there and trust, trust that, that it will lead us to, 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 to shed more light into our human condition, into this condition of society, you know, to trust the, this trip from here, again, I'm telling you, he was, for me, he's been the brightest intellect I have ever met in my life. You know? <laughs> to trust the trip, the connection with, with the heart, with the heart. 
uh, with the heart. And to tell you the truth, he did have, he, he perhaps inadvertently, he conveyed that to me, perhaps inadvertently, because he loved the world of ideas. He loved the world of ideas. But inadvertently, he, he conveyed that, 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 that wonder to how deep did he take that? I cannot say. <laughs> it's hard for me to say. But what is enough for me to say is that I connected him. He, he opened that also to me. So I, I, I decided <laughs> I've been inspired by him, by him. It is not the inspiration of a saint, of a, of a, no, 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 nothing like that. He was a human being like you are, like I am, with all his flaws, all his flaws. But, but again, he embodied, he embodied life as best as he could do, as best as he, and, and that is wonderful by itself. That is wonderful. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I think it might really be an example of how we need to approach the difficulties which the world is in now, no? That we go from the mind and only thinking and I'm right and you are wrong and something like this, but going into the heart and, and, and ask the soul, what, what is reality really, you know? And this is different than what your mind says. So maybe this is an example for how uh, the life's journey can bring the reunition, uh, reuniting these two or many aspects to become whole and from there address the problems instead of fighting for one idea and this must be right, you know. <laughs> I, I honestly, I could not, uh, I, I, thank you, Heidi. And I, absolutely. Absolutely. I think he, if we can picture him, and I'm trying to picture him, he has a very much open mind. He would, he would know how to listen. He would not feel threatened. Okay. And he was open to, oh my God, there's something else here. There's something else in life. Okay. So, so, so just, just by by writing about his life, it would have been a very interesting book anyway, because it's like that episode with, I'm telling you, you're know, leaving his home at 15, fleeing in Germany in 1933. That's so interesting. But also what's interesting is it is, let's, if I may say this, is how can we match the integrity because he embodies integrity here with that, the deeper integrity that we all have. And to the best of my knowledge, he was a high, of high integrity, my dear Heidi. So I am very thankful to him, not only because he shared his life with me, but I'm more thank, thankful to him because he, he, he op inadvertently, <laughs> he opened an air window or a door and I decided to cross it because writing this book has been a journey for, for inspiration. Yeah, wonderful. And I hope that when people will read your book, that will be the same for them, that that is opening the mind and the heart and the soul at the same time. So you said it's not yet published, but it's about to be published. How can people uh, reach you then and get, get the book? Um, it is, it is being reviewed right now by an editor because I just finished it. It is being re reviewed. And upon the, that review, I, I will have probably to make some adjustments. It's in Spanish. It's in Spanish. <laughs> it's in Spanish, uh, Heidi. And that's interesting because that's my mother tongue. And somewhat I, think I felt inspired by... <laughs> so... Um, I want to say that I am in touch with the family. The family is very, very supportive. And just to give you an idea about the integrity of the family, you know, Jorge, it's your freedom to write about him. <laughs> Remember, he was not a perfect man, <laughs> okay? But the family is very much interested, and I love the family, 
in seeing it translated into English and, and German eventually. But that's a process. That is a process. So it will take some time still. It will take some time. <laughs> so we will have another conversation again when everything is out, especially the German version, because I want to bring it to Germany. And we need, we need some examples of how people in some way were really individual heroes in managing their life as Germans in these times. Uh, so I really would like to have that. And English, of course, you know, that's the language we are talking today. So I, I find it very, very, very interesting and in that you shared that with me and it makes me curious to read it, but I don't know Spanish. I know Italian, but not Spanish. So I have to wait a while. <laughs> yes, uh, just it's a it's a process. It it is a process, yeah. uh, Heidi. But it will be it will be out. <laughs> yeah, good. And I hope that <clears throat> the the people who are viewing this will be inspired only by you, as I am when we meet in our group. You are always so coming from the heart and so expressive, and I really appreciate this. So, I mean, we Germans normally are not like this, you know, we are more like... Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> well, remember, my dear Heidi, my lady is from Bavaria, Bavaria, from Munich, and I call her my organized Italian. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those Bavarians, you know, have that, yeah. that yeah. love for life, yes, uh, that Italians or Bavarians organization yeah. of the Germans. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm in Italy, you know, because in where I grew up, it was a little bit too, you know, too strict, let's say. And Italy is a sort of an uh, expansion of, of your being able to... Oh, Heidi, I think uh, some part it got cut off. Your, in your culture, I guess, to be very expressive. <laughs> <laughs> you were okay. cut off for a, for a few seconds, Heidi. You didn't hear me? The last, just the last, yeah. the last thing. Okay, yeah, I know. I said that you come from a culture, from the Southern culture, let's say, which are much more expressive than we Germans are normally. So I really <laughs> appreciate that too. Well, so Heidi, I, thank you. Yeah, I thank you very much for this. And let's hope that we can have the book very soon. Thank you, my thank dear you. Heidi. Thank so you. from the bottom of my heart. And yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> thank you. And <laughs> I don't God. say I'm in, connect I am in communion, communion with you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>